Cheers everyone, this is Blaster Brewmaster here, and welcome to another tutorial on using OBS for streaming and recording. So today we are going to cover how to use different streaming services with OBS. So of course, I told you in the last episode when we were setting up OBS how to use different profiles, so you might want to start populating different ones for different services. So for example here, I've got one set for just YouTube, if I go over here under settings, now all of the different services you're going to have to be setting up in this video are going to be here under the stream setting. So here we're going to have streaming service and you can also do the custom streaming server if you've got some specific service you want to use that's not listed here. However, if you go here under services you're going to find a lot of different options and this requires like very little actual work from you on this part. So we have Twitch, YouTube Gaming, Hitbox, Beam Pro. Daily Motion, Live Coding TV, and then of course we've got just like a bunch of other ones that really isn't, you know, too big or well known. But at the same time, you can see here that we've got a couple ones I mentioned before. We've got Joycaster here, and Restream.io. So those are going to be a couple of different services we're focusing on here today. So we've got YouTube and YouTube Gaming here, and we've just got two different choices for our server. So we're going to pretty much want to leave it as the primary YouTube ingestion server. Then we're going to populate our stream key right here. Just in order to show you how you go about finding that, I'm going to go to my dashboard. And I'm going to block off stuff that you really don't need to be seeing, but I'll kind of point out exactly what we're going to go to. So once you're here in the dashboard, you're probably going to need to go under channel first if you have not enabled live streaming. And you'll see right here, this is the status and features area. We're going to have the live streaming right here. Now, I don't believe you can really turn this off after you've turned it on, but we just want this to be green here, so we need to turn on live streaming here. Now, we're going to go under live streaming next, and once we are here, this is going to be where we're going to set up exactly everything that we're going to do with the live stream. So, here you can see I've got the title, I've got the description for what we're doing here in this live stream, and if I go down here, category, set to gaming, of course, and this is where I put the actual video game. So this is going to be where we're going to be found in the YouTube gaming app and YouTube gaming website. Now, over here, this is going to be your stream key. I'm not going to reveal this or anything, but you need to copy this and go back into OBS. And let me go to the one that we're actually going to be demonstrating this in. And this is where we paste that stream key. Okay, and we'll just hit OK here. I'm going to leave that as it is, though. So back on the actual dashboard for the live stream. So just make sure we've got everything set up. Now you can go here, we've got stream options, we can enable the DVR. Most of these things are already kind of turned on. If you find you need to add any sort of a delay, you can add that right here. Now you've also got, you know, make archive unlisted when complete. That'll keep people from being able to go and watch your live stream once they've completed. Which you may want, I personally use that myself because I'd rather actually take the live streams and cut them up into episodes. In a way to kind of stretch out the content and also refine the content too. Monetization, you can monetize with ads and then cards. This is going to be here populating on the right side, gives access to, you know, different content you want. Here is your chat window, so you're going to see, you know, anyone that's talking with you, you're going to see right here. Analytics, this is going to let you know who is watching right now and how many messages have you received. And if you need to keep track of any of you know, your stream health right here, this is going to tell you if you're having any problems. Right Finally, here we've got the option to be able to share out to different services. Okay, so that was the YouTube service. Now let's go ahead and just switch this over to Twitch. I'm not going to save this on this profile or anything. But basically a lot of the same stuff that we have to do on the OBS side. Nothing really changes through any of these. We do have different servers that are available though, depending on the service. So Twitch here only has US San Francisco if you're in the US. Various Asian and European ones, South American. Well, here's a couple of other US ones that also work too. Now these are probably going to be just different ones you can play with and just find out which one has the best and solidest connection. Now, you may find that local ones may work better, or the San Francisco one may work better. I personally haven't really tried specifically focusing on Twitch only. I kind of usually either use YouTube or, you know, live stream to both services at the same time, which I'll talk about in a second. But I'm going to leave this, of course, back here. Cancel out of that. 
We're not going to really demonstrate how to do all that all over again. Instead, let's go to the Twitch side of things and take a look at how that works. It's a lot simpler here, because we're not really putting in all that extra content like we are on YouTube. We're just putting in what's the title for our broadcast and what's the title for our game. Chat is going to show up right here on the right hand side. And here's where we can see the preview for our video. Now underneath here, you know, it's telling you are you online or not, how many views have you had, and how many followers do you have. Now, a lot of the rest of this stuff is going to probably be a little bit more inconsequential to you until you start becoming really big on Twitch or anything. We have editors here, which allows you to give access to your channel's dashboard to other people, in case you know you start wanting to have other people help you manage your actual channel. The same here with the dashboards. You can grant other channels you know, access to your dashboard as well. Activity here just shows you all the stuff you've been doing with your channel recently. Stats, this is where you can get into the technical and see, you know, how many people have been watching your stuff and see how well you've been doing over, you know, periods of time. You can set your date range right here, and this is showing you how many video plays you've had on that specific date. So the stream key here, this is the part we actually need to set up in OBS. And I'm going to go ahead and click on show key. And this is going to be blocked out because it shows you it uncensored. So, you know, I don't want you to have access to that part. But this is going to be just what you need to copy here and put into your OBS. And this final link right here, streaming apps, that just gives you suggestions for different applications you can use to stream to Twitch and, you know, what you can do with them. It gives you access to guides and stuff. Over here on the far right end is your video manager. Click on that, that gives you access to your recent broadcasts that are still archived. You can go through here and decide to make highlights and things like that with them. Okay, so that is Twitch and YouTube working independently of each other. But there are, of course, services that allow you to stream to both of them at the same time, as well as other services too. So let's start out first with Restream. So, we've got the Restream profile up here. I mean. Basically nothing in this is really that different. You're just going to be using, setting your service to which one you want to work with, setting the server for it, which is going to be closest to whichever one you have the best luck with, and then posting the stream key from that application in there just like you would with Twitch or YouTube. Now the thing is though that the two that I'm talking about here, Restream and Joycaster, work very differently. So I'm going to bring Restream up first. Now here is Restream.io. Now they've changed things quite a bit since the last time I was actually directly in their website, but the main concept of how everything works is still pretty much the same. You can see here all the different servers that they have available, and where exactly that server is. In case you want to test anything out, you can use this right here. I've cleared out my channels list a bit right here, cut it down to just the YouTube one so we can add a Twitch one. I'm going to click on Add Channel, and add Twitch and just connect to Twitch. It'll just take me in and allow me to authorize my access to Twitch so that the service can stream to it. Okay, let me get this little message here to clear that off. When you stream, it's going to pop up right here in this list. Just give your stream title a name right here. And also under here, under social alerts, you can connect to your Twitter, your Facebook. You may have to reconnect it every once in a while. And then here's the message that's going to push when you go live. Now, the difference between Restream IO and Joycaster is this right here. So, the way that Restream goes is once you start streaming to it, it goes live immediately. So you don't plan anything out as much as you will in Joycaster, which I'll show you in a second. But it's a good way that if you just want to go live, you know, just set up what you want in your stream title, it'll push to that. It'll give you your social alerts here and pop that up and you're just going live like that. So, let's go on to Joycaster. Okay, so here's Joycaster.co. So, this is of course similar in some ways to Restream.io. Basically, do the same thing. You set up your streaming services over here. Down in the bottom, you pick which one you want to add. I'm just going to go ahead and say this one, add YouTube. And I've got this pre-saved one, but I'm just going to go ahead and say create a new stream profile. Go ahead and call this one YouTube Gaming. Next here. 
and it's going to ask to do the same thing. We just go and click next, connects me over to Google, and I just pick which one I want to go ahead and associate. So that's been added now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it though, because I don't need to keep this one on here. Just a demonstration to show you how to use it. Now, the biggest differences between Joycaster and Restream. As I mentioned with Restream, it's pretty much you start streaming, you go live immediately. With Joycaster, you don't. You start streaming and it'll start popping up here on this little box right here, but you're not live until you hit this Broadcast Now button. So first thing though, you can set up everything you need to for your live stream, which is a really, really nice feature. Of course, if you want to just go live immediately, it's a lot more of a pain than it is restream. Because you have to go in here and set up some basics at the very least and just hit broadcast now. It doesn't work like that with restream. But anyways, so we're going to go ahead and give this a title, test stream for the win. Set up a category, which pretty much we're going to want it to be gaming in our case. Of course, we can do other things if we need to. And then the summary, it's going to pop up in your description too. Live stream test. Now you got to go into advanced broadcast settings if you want to pop in any extra stuff. You could just leave that and go live. So, you know, enough to kind of get going there. But you can put in extra description right here. You can fill in all of your tags you want to put in here. You just separate them with comma. Go over to promotional settings to set promote on Twitter, promote on Facebook, set what your message is going to be right here. YouTube settings right here. We can set it to do in video promotion. Keep the enable DVR archive. We can set it to unlisted or private too, which are nice little features. And finally here we can add a thumbnail. Go browse for one, let's say go with that one. So that's gonna post onto YouTube. Of course, it doesn't really do anything on the Twitch side, but you know, whatever you gotta do. So, otherwise, now we are ready to go live. And the nice feature here, too, is not only can you just use that to push all those changes at once, I will say you may have to still go into the YouTube live streaming dashboard and change your game. I find that it doesn't always update cleanly, so keep that in mind. Most of the rest of the stuff will push though. Well, you can go ahead and save this broadcast for later. It's going to ask you what your game is, and you'll get this also when you go for broadcast now. It's going to ask you what game you want. And you just click next, and then you can schedule it for when you want to go live. Say what the start time is, the duration, how long exactly this is going to last, hours, minutes, that sort of thing. Okay, and so here is our live stream that we're going to be doing on this date. Now, as you complete live streams, you can go here under show recently completed ones and you could just go ahead and pop that up if you want to go ahead and use that as a base template for another live stream later on. Keeps the same thumbnail, keeps pretty much all the same settings so you don't really have to do anything, which is nice. Now, the one thing I will say though that is a little bit annoying, if you do use the feature for saving broadcasts for later on, it's not going to go through your normal live stream dashboard on YouTube. You'll do it for Twitch, of course, because you don't really have two different sections for it. It will push, though, as its own separate live stream that's been pre-scheduled. So that's one thing you'll have to keep in mind if you use this. Now over here, we have the live chat beta, which is going to give you all your combined chats into one. Now, if you want to pop this out, you can go here to settings and open a new window and voila. There you go. Now we use the chat and there we have it. Now speaking of which, Restream has its own little chat service. This right here. I'm going to click on that. And it's just going to ask to verify the application. It may ask you to update and everything. Just let that happen. And it does. And let me pull this over here. So this is going to connect in too. And you're going to have access to all your chats combined in the same one. Now, again, if you're going to use your scheduled broadcast, you're probably going to want to use the Joycaster one, as this won't connect to it, because this is only looking for your live now live streams in YouTube. Whereas this, like I said, if you schedule it, it's going to go as a scheduled broadcast. So this will not pick up those chats. So keep that in mind if you're going to do that. Now, one last little feature here that I want to just kind of show you is since we've got these as separate windows, Let's go here into OBS again. 
you can see that I've got this little service set up here. So, i turn this off for a second. So, if you want to include your chat in your live stream, which will probably be quite a nice little feature, it'll allow you to show who and what you're responding to. You know, people can see each other on both sides, especially if you're like talking to someone on Twitch, but you have a whole bunch of people on YouTube. They might be a bit confused as to what exactly you're talking about, who you're talking to, that sort of thing. So, I'm going to remove this altogether. Yes. And I'm just going to add it as a brand new feature. So, in order to add your chat here in the actual screen in the capture, go down to Window Capture. I'm going to call this the Restream one. Chat. We'll do it for each one of those. So, I'm going to go ahead and add this as a new window. And set your window, in this case, to the Restream chat. Okay, so once I've set this here to Restream chat, just make sure, you know, we can keep the multi-adapter compatibility on or off. Capture cursor for this, we probably won't want, because we don't want that cursor to show up if it happens to pop over there. I'm going to click OK, just move this to where I want this to be, and expand it until it fits up in a way I think that looks good. Okay, but what if I want to use the Joycast? Well, because it's a web-based service, it works a little bit differently. You're going to want to go here and choose Browser Source instead of Windows Capture, because sometimes it may not capture that properly. You go to Browser Source, and I'm going to go ahead and call this Joycaster Chat. Okay, now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go back into the actual chat window, copy the address, take it and paste it here. Now also, you're going to need to resize the actual height and width of this thing. So. I'm going to change this to about 200 by 600. Now, the rest of this is going to be kind of a little bit up to you. I haven't exactly played around with this enough to tell you specifically how to avoid this, because when you hit OK, you can see that it's opaque. It doesn't really have a background. Now, if I go ahead and expand this, though, let's do this. Doesn't look too terrible and pop this over here on this side. In fact, let's just kind of do this, because we don't really need any of that. There we go. People should still be able to see, you know, the chat and read it as it goes along. I may go back here into Joycaster chat. Let's pop that up to about 300. How about that? 300 for the width. I think we'll be good. We may have to resize this again. But once we do that, that's a bit too big. Okay, I'm going to stick with 250. I think that'll be a good medium number there. So just fine-tune this until you get it exactly the width and the appearance that you want. So, I do here. That should probably be fine. People can see the chat. And this way, it can also kind of go as like a little bit of an overlay. Now, if you end up deciding you want to kind of have this look a little bit better, you can put whatever you want as a background behind it. But the chat's going to pop up through here, and you're going to see everything as people talk. So, you'll be able to have people communicating with each other. So, that's it for the tutorial today. I hope that you found this informative and that this will help you get set up with using different streaming services and the tools that they provide you in order to help you live stream to multiple services. Now, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. I definitely would like to, you know, get some more material to focus on whatever you need help with. So feel free to leave a comment down below and ask whatever questions you have. That way I can go ahead and get some answers for you. So thank you for going ahead and joining me on this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a like, give it a comment, give it a subscribe. Whatever you feel like it, I always like to hear from you. In the meantime, go ahead and raise your glass in the air and have another pint on me. Love and peace. It's my family. My family was mean to me. I didn't do anything to them. I tried to say hello, and they said hello in my long family tradition of beating each other over the head with sharp metal objects. It's a very love tradition, I gotta say. Well, I'm thinking about it. Give me one second. You know what? I got all this stuff. I think the only thing I need to do is go back and get my uh, souls, because, yeah. Where, where did I die again? Did anyone see where I died? I don't see my stuff.